happened. Round three, the FI Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Sardinia at Rio Sardo. The Ram MX2 qualifying race got off to a uncomfortable start. Number 96, Lucas Kuna went down. He took a couple of riders with him, including the number 80 of Andrea Adamo. Up front, though, Sasha Kunin got duffed up on the exit of turn two by the two Yamahas of Rick Elsinger and Timo Beniston. Just behind them in fourth place was the number 74, Kaida Wolf, the red plate holder, championship leader. But he soon carved his way into second with this outside move on Timo Beniston and then went after Elsinger a lap later. And all of a sudden it was still a Dutch one too, but it was the 74 who led over the 44. Kevin McClellan had a fiery start as well he moved up into fourth with that move on uh, Sasha Kunin and that's where the Monster Energy Triumph rider would stay he kept the Yamahas in his sights for a bit as well Beniston then moved to second on lap five and he started to close in on De Wolf in the latter stages Liam Everts also found his way past his Red Bull KTM teammate to move into six as Sasha Kunin faded back to 10th place. It was a comfortable win and back-to-back -back wins in the ramp qualifying race for Kaida Wolf from Thibaut Beniston, Rick Elzinger, Camden McClellan and Simon Langenfelder. And this Sally finish, and these are the points that were awarded as well for this ramp qualifying race. The Stan Husqvarna of Kaida Wolf edging out Thibaut Beniston, Rick Elzinger, Camden McClellan, Simon Langenfelder, Liam Everts, Mikkel Harp and Andrea Bonacorsi, who went 1-1 here last year in the MX250. And then Lucas Coonan and Sasha Coonan. And in the championship, Kaida Wolf now extends his lead. He's 16 clear of Langenfelder with the Damo, another 25 points further back. Beniston is up to fourth, Lucas Coonan down to fifth. Fine race, watch the two Kawasaki's. The 91 of Jeremy Siwa sweeps the whole shot, but number three, Roman Fevre, third in the championship, he went down. The guy to the outside in blue was Todd Kellett, the fill-in for Yago Kitts at Monster Energy Yamaha. Watch to the top of your screen, Ivo Monticelli off the side of the track. He went down the back of pit lane, and that put him all the way back to about 24th, 25th place. He wouldn't finish anyway, and uh, he goes to the line in 28th place. Jorge Prado, though, capitalising on a couple of mistakes from Siwa, quickly into the lead, and on the same lap, Geiser also found his way past and into second. Could he do anything about Prado, though? That was the question. Belandrin was harassing the 84 of Hurlings, and then spun up, lost a position for, to Paul's Jonas, and that was the position completed at the end of pit lane, so Jonas up to fifth, Belandrin down to six as Roman Fevre went out at 15th on lap three. He will go to the line 29. Jumping long, under pressure from Jeffrey Hurlings. Jeremy Siwa losing third place on lap five. Hurlings went on to finish in third. Siwa fourth. Prado, one or two mistakes. Uh, issues with back markers, I should say, but no one really came close to him once again. And back-to-back uh, -back ramp qualifying races for the number one and championship leader. Geis across the line second. Hurlings third, Siwa fourth. Paul's Jonas fifth, ahead of Calvin Belandrin. And here's how the race finished then, and the points. Prado on 10, Geis on 9, Hurlings picking up 8 for his third place. And see with Jonas Melander and cold enough. And Brian Bogers making his debut in the World Championship on a Fantic this year, of course, uh, at the expense of Roman Amostike, who now finds himself at HRC. He finished in 16th, but Gio and Ostland picking up the final points there. And Jorge Prado now 11 clear of Tim Geiser. Fevre 32 behind after his DNF. And Hurlings 39 back in fourth. Jonas is fifth. Coldenoff moves up to ninth then after his day today.